Support WrestleTalk! Share this video on social media. Thanks for your support on Patreon, little drummer boy Scott Drummond. Hello and welcome to the WrestleTalk Soup Soup Super News! I'm Ollie Davis. We've got a packed show for you today, including CM Punk getting back in a wrestling ring, Kenny Omega potentially going back to New Japan, and the real reason Stone Cold Steve Austin is returning to WWE. And at the end of this episode, there's the brand new installment of Wrestle Sketch, making its WrestleTalk News debut about how Triple H is trying to get people to like Seth Rollins again. Click the timestamps in the video description below to jump to any of those stories right now. And answer our question of the day in the comments down below. Will CM Punk debut for AEW at this Saturday's All Out? Because I'll be answering comments from out of nowhere! saying no, we do not cover CM Punk news enough. If anything, we're actually really, really restrained about it. CM Punk to AEW confirmed. But first, a few months ago, we here at WrestleTalk launched our first ever wrestling scholarship scheme, where we awarded 16-year-old standout wrestler Callum Newman £2,000 and industry support to help him with his career. And then we partnered with independent promotions WrestleGate, which saw Hangman Page shockingly wrestle pack ahead of their AEW match, and Frontline, which was founded by Will Ospreay. And you'll get to see the payoff to all of this in our new series, Wrestle Talk Showcase, which begins this coming Monday, where Luke and I put the spotlight on the independent scene to showcase the next generation of wrestling stars and those amazing wrestlers and promotions who currently aren't getting the attention they deserve. So make sure to give Wrestle Talk a subscribe and enable notifications to know when it goes live first. Support Wrestle Talk, support independent wrestling. It's gonna be really awesome. Speaking of awesome. Really awkward, awesome Kong segue. This Saturday we'll see the conclusion of AEW's first year with their All In sequel, All Out. Their last pay-per-view event before they start weekly TV on TNT from Wednesday the 2nd of October. Mine, Luke and Laurie's predictions for the show are up to watch on this channel right now, where I made the bold pick of Awesome Kong to win the pre-show's 21-woman battle royal. Bold because at that point, she hadn't been announced. But because I'm the wrestling equivalent of not Nostradamus, 18% of the time I'm right. Every time, just hours after recording our predictions, Awesome Kong was confirmed as a participant by the New York Post. The winner will go on to fight to become the inaugural AEW Women's Champion on the TNT premiere. Kong made her name in TNA's knockouts division in the late 2000s, the actual women's revolution a whole decade before Stephanie McMahon's, and then moved on to a brief but memorable run as Karma in WWE. She then transitioned into acting, where she's a featured character in the excellent Netflix 80s wrestling series Glow, but at Double or Nothing in May, she made her first wrestling appearance in over three years, debuting for AEW. After appearing alongside Brandy Rhodes at Fight for the Fallen, it was implied the promotion were building to a world-breaking Awesome Kong vs. Aja Kong feud. Battle of the Kongs! But the Wrestling Observer Newsletter has reported that Azure is already booked elsewhere on the All Out Day, so that kaiju clash will presumably take place later on. Azure joins Yuki Sakazaki, Shoku Nakajima, B Priestley and John Moxley as other AEW wrestlers who can't appear on the show. Y you're really taking this All Out name a bit too seriously. And now someone else won't be joining them. Young up-and-coming talent Bret Hart has also revealed he won't be appearing for the promotion anytime soon. Bret made a surprise appearance at Double or Nothing to unveil the AEW world title for the first time, but even with the promotion crowning their first ever champion this Saturday, Hart has told Ariel Hawani he won't be in attendance. It was convenient the first time. It was a one-time thing, mostly because I was in the area. But I do have a lot of fondness for what they're trying to do, and I support them. I hope they become a real big wrestler company in the next year. Y you can't get a bigger endorsement of a new wrestling promotion than appearing for them because I was in the area. That's even better than half-heartedly tapping Seth Rollins on the shoulder in Toronto. Interestingly, with all these wrestlers being linked to AEW, one of AEW's top stars has been talked about for going to New Japan. It was announced earlier this week that Kenny Omega will be returning to his beloved DDT promotion in Japan for a one-off mixed tag team match on the 3rd of November, where he'll partner with other AEW contributors.
contracted talent Rio against Antonio Honda and Mia Yamashita for one of their biggest shows ever, the excellently named Ultimate Party 2019, which sounds like a dance game for the Wii. This is Omega's first appearance for DDT since he left the promotion for New Japan five years ago in 2014. And according to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, there are some in NJPW that want him to appear for them too. Kenny actually has in his AEW contract that he can wrestle for New Japan, but the promotion has not called him for any dates. There's issues that have to be resolved. Apparently there are people in New Japan who want to have him return, but others are against it, with Meltzer calling it a debated issue in the promotion. Apparently Kenny's name seriously came up before New Japan's show in Dallas last weekend, but nobody ended up reaching out, and Tony Khan would have likely blocked Omega appearing as AEW don't want their wrestlers appearing for other promotions major shows in North America. But there's only one name connected to AEW that we all want to know about this weekend. Former WWE megastar Darren Young. What seriously, what's he up to at the moment? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and CM Punk. Punk is easily the biggest name return still available to the wrestling world, and it just so happens that this Saturday, hours before AEW's All Out show, he'll headline their sister convention, Starcast, with a very rare wrestling related panel. The obvious speculation is that Punk could announce his return to wrestling here, debut for AEW at All Out that same night, and give a massive middle finger to WWE, the company he holds responsible for putting him in legal purgatory for several years, with the Dr. Chris a man defamation case after he quit them in early 2014. It's been over five years since then, but he did literally return to wrestling early this year, with a surprise appearance under a mask at an independent show for his friend, and Starcast promoter Conrad Thompson has spoken about whether Punk headlining the convention is in any way linked to a potential full-time return to wrestling and AEW debut. I'm sure when he's doing hundreds of meets and greets, every other person is going to ask that. There's a lot of people who really miss CM Punk and identify with his persona. My only thing is I want to clarify, since there is speculation out there, this is not a piggyback booking. I did not book CM Punk through AEW. He is not going to be at all out. Anyone having that expectation is probably going to be disappointed. That's exactly what someone covering up a CM Punk return would say! Well, it's an expectation that Comrade is actively leaning into. As to promote the event, Starcast have tweeted, After five long years, CM Punk is back in the ring! With a video of literally that, with the Straight Edge superstar even taking a bump in a pro wrestling tease ring. Take a look. the ropes or something? Is that what... No, this is like, uh, Raven, right? No, it's, you know what? Everybody sits this way now, right? This doesn't feel right either. This thing hurts. I feel like I'm gonna roll my ankle or something. I'm winded. Welcome to StarCast. No? What? Oh, God. Hi, everybody. My name's... Should I be Phil or CM Punk? I have no idea what I'm going to say. There's no script. I'm not following a storyline. I'm coming to hang out with some fans. And yes, I'll have a live microphone in my hand. Uh, so who knows what's going to happen, and that's the thing. Every time I have a live microphone in my hand, I never exactly know what's going to say. And it's gotten me in a lot of trouble. Uh, I'm hoping to avoid any kind of trouble come Saturday. But you never can tell. I just took a bump. That's like $20,000 right there. Thanks, Conrad. And then Punk seemingly took a shot at WWE, making a joke about previous StarCast headliners who have pulled out of the event, potentially a reference to WWE reportedly making The Undertaker and Kurt Angle cancel their StarCast bookings before Double or Nothing in May. I'm sorry to inform you all that I have to cancel my upcoming appearance at StarCast. <laughs> That's what everybody does, right? Everybody cancels? Well, I'm not Cancel it, because I don't cancel, because I do what I want. Nobody can tell me where to go, who to work for, 
who to sign autographs for, whether I have to smile to take pictures or not. I will smile because I am actually going to be happy to see you. But I'm not going to cancel, unlike everybody else who's ever done StarCast. I will be there and I'll see you Saturday. If you're not at the actual event on Saturday, because it's sold out, you can watch Punk's StarCast panel streaming live on Fight.tv from 1pm Eastern Time. Or I could just ask him right now! This week I tweeted the man who saved my wrestling fandom in 2011, CM Punk, and asked him the question everyone desperately wants to know the answer to. Genuinely from my heart as a 24 year old adult male back in 2011, CM Punk became my hero and I still look up to you, so I'd be particularly honoured if you answered this burning I forgot to write question for me. Would you rather fart every time you laugh or burp every time you cry? High five emoji OD! With a G-I-F of a cat marching and the caption, have a good day. I just, I, just I, I can't make up my mind because, you know, I laugh a lot, so that's a lot of windy pops, but also I wouldn't want to be burping in serious emotional situations. So I guess now we just play the waiting game to find out the real answer to the CM Punk mystery. Oh god, it's just more rejection! He's never gonna get back to me! Oh god damn it, that's the wrong way round! But while AEW and StarCast are selling out arenas, WWE are even struggling to fill up their home base. WWE announced earlier this week that Stone Cold Steve Austin would be returning to Monday Night Raw for the first time in... Well, just over a month actually after the ratings grabbing Raw Reunion Special in July. For the September 9th episode live from New York's Madison Square Garden, WWE's home base! Well, also until New Japan and ROH ran a show there earlier this year. With Undertaker also being randomly announced for SmackDown the following night, also in Madison Square Garden, which is the go-home week for Clash of Champions, it was initially speculated Austin would be returning for a storyline reason, as the Wrestling Observer has reported a dead man hasn't just been added to sell tickets, but is in fact for a bigger purpose, potentially starting the build to his next match. Come on, The Fiend! For Stone Cold, however, it's just totally to sell more tickets. PW Insider is reporting the real reason Austin was added to the Raw show is quite simple. They have not sold out the garden, they're half sold out for Raw, and a little bit less than half sold out for SmackDown based on the seating maps I've seen, so they're gonna add some additional attractions to try and bring people in. Perhaps Stone Cold will be the latest person to endorse Seth Rollins to make everyone like him again. Wrestle Talk News debut of Wrestle Sketch segue! Good news, Trips! I still have full control of NXT. <laughs> For now. No, I fixed Sasha, but damn thing hasn't played ball since WrestleMania. Legit, boss. Your dad is dead. I have blue hair now. <laughs> you guys got a second? Always for my favorite son. I mean, Seth. I, I said Seth. I wanted to thank you guys again for believing in me, letting me give back to the WWE universe by finally winning the Universal title from Brock Lesnar and all the fat stacks that come with it. <laughs> John. John. What a great baby face. Young Bucks? More like Big Bucks? <laughs> John. John. I should tweet that. Actually, son, I mean, I mean, Seth, I wanted to talk to you about that. I'm in the money. Maybe don't tweet about all your earnings so much. I'm worried it'll turn some fans against you. Nonsense. Poor people love money. And if Seth stops being over, we'll just point out he's marrying Becky Lynch. Until I replace her last minute with Charlotte. We did that. Everyone hated it. Put him in a segment with crime type. Oh, thank called the Street Profits, Vince, and everyone saw through it. Did we mention he's dating Becky Lynch? Vince, the fans need a good reason to like him again. Compelling stories, great matches. I got it! Bret Hart can tap him on the shoulder. Oh, forget it. I'm gonna go draw more NXT TakeOver logos. NXT? More like Job XT! And send tweet! <laughs> John. That's it, give me your phone! What? No Twitter for you, young man! Now go out there and cut a baby face promo. Trips. Now those were some grapefruits. I just thought of what you'll do with your own son and did the complete opposite of that. I don't know where I begin and Corbin ends. Help me. Speaking of which, a ah, little tear in reality never hurt anyone, but don't tell his mother.
A Venom, a Marvel Cinematic Universe crossover has been scrapped by Disney. Find out what happened with Luke and Laurie by clicking the video on the right and what huge WWE plans have been leaked for Bray Wyatt's The Fiend. Click the video below that to find out the major next step for the character. I've been Ollie Davis and that was wrestling.